I wasn't going to make a video today. I was going to have a day off. But I decided to be a rebel and make this one anyway. Hi there, I'm Bev. I'm a 58 year old postmenopausal Gen X woman with late diagnosed ADHD. And I want to tap into my inner rebel. You know, when I was a teenager, I had a bit of a rebellious streak. I think probably from about the age of 13 to about 18, 19, went through a very rebellious stage. I think it was a lot to do with having ADHD. Now I look back, it was also things like my mum was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was 15 and she was going through a mastectomy and radiotherapy. Uh, we had my grandmother living with us on my dad's side and she was a little bit of a cantankerous woman. So we had her living with us at the same time as my mum was going through her treatment. My brother was living away. He was in the Air Force. But when he came home, we didn't have enough bedrooms. It was a lot of stress and pressure. I was about to take my O levels or my exams at school and I wasn't doing great. I spent an awful lot of time playing truant from school and actually skipping lessons. And I was hanging around with boys and I was doing, you know, stuff that my mum and dad probably weren't very, wouldn't have been very happy about if they'd known. Nothing, nothing bad. I mean, I wasn't getting into trouble with the police or anything like that, but I was probably smoking a few things I shouldn't have been. Um, and I was just a rebel. But when I think about that rebellion, it was definitely coming from a place of fear, uh, from a bit of self-loathing, I think, a bit of self-esteem uh, problems. I think it was coming from anger and just feeling confused and lost. I knew I never quite fitted in when I was a teenager. Um, and as I say, I think some of that was probably ADHD, but it's probably a combination of everything. But I definitely went through this period of rebellion. And then I sort of settled down and I got married and I did all the conventional stuff, got married. I did do that twice, but you know, even from the second one, settled down, had a family, bought a house found a steady job, had the same job for 32 years. It was all very safe and very conventional and the rebel kind of disappeared. But in this video, which I have to tell you is a little bit tongue in cheek, some of it will, is a little bit more serious, but most of it is just a bit tongue in cheek. So please take it as that. Um, when I hit my fifties, it was like that little rebel um, inside me wanted to come out again. So I've got nine little rebellions for you. Some of them I've done. Some of them are on my bucket list and some of them are on, I guess, my wish list. Is that different to a bucket list? My bucket list is kind of things I know I will do. My wish list, I wouldn't mind doing it, but maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. So anyway, let's kick off with number one. And the first one, which I think is probably going to be a bit controversial, is quit your job. If you don't like it, be a rebel. Just quit. I did that when I was 52. Now, I know I'm going to get pushed back probably on this because lots of people will be saying, I can't afford to do that and I've got commitments and it just wouldn't work and I get that. But we're talking about our inner rebel here and your rebel will not care. Your rebel would not care if you had too many other things going on. It's a rebel after all. So actually, I, I did do that in when I was 52. I was in a job that was stressing me out. It wasn't making me happy. I'd been in the same role, for, well, not in the same role, but in the same, uh, with the same employer for 32 years and I'd had enough and I was struggling with my menopause. I was struggling with what I now know to have been undiagnosed ADHD. So I had all this stuff. Oh, I've still got my headphones on. Never mind. I suppose we can call this a podcast. Um, we had all of this going on. I had all of this going on and I just said enough is enough and I tapped into my inner rebel and I handed my notice in. I didn't have a clue what I was going to go to. I didn't know. I certainly knew I didn't want another job. I didn't know what my business was going to be, but I knew I wanted to start a business. And the most amazing thing happens when you don't give yourself a plan B. Opportunities open up and the answers happen. The, ans the answers come to you. So although I didn't really know what I was doing, I still managed despite COVID and despite a lack of knowledge to grow. Um, by my standards, a successful business and opened up loads of opportunities to me just because I let my inner rebel out and, and quit my job at 52. So that's number one. Number two, ditch the, your toxic friends. Be a rebel, let them go. I've never really been one for having big groups of friends, but I had some long-term friends who, when I made the decision to, uh, 
quit my job and my life changed and started doing different things. Some of those friends weren't as supportive as I might have wanted them to be or hoped they'd have been. And over the years, I've kind of distanced myself from them and let them go. Not in a big having a fallout sort of way. We didn't fall out and they probably won't even know this has happened. But I did sort of distance myself because I found that some of those friends, when I spent time with them, I came away feeling less good about myself than when I, than I did before we got together. And no friendship should ever leave you feeling worse about yourself. A good friend will always make you feel better about yourself. So I've l- kind of let go of any toxic friendships that didn't build me up, didn't leave me feeling good. And I have some, you know, I have a whole new bunch of friends now, some of whom I've never even met in person. They're online friends, internet friends that I've made over the last so six, seven years. I've made business acquaintances that I met through business who've become friends and they do that thing of making me feel better about myself. I had a a conversation this morning with somebody I met through Instagram a couple of years ago and we had this wonderful conversation and I just leave the conversation feeling bolstered, just feeling so warm and, and good inside and that's what a friendship should be. So that's that's my second uh, rebellion. I'm going to rebel against toxic friends. Number three go and dye your hair pink, shocking pink, or violet, or blue, or bright green, whatever you fancy, go and do it now. (laughs) I haven't done this yet. This is on the wish list, I think, because I'm not sure if I've quite got the courage to tap into the inner rebel enough to actually go and do it. And I don't want it to look like a purple rinse. So if I was going to do it, I'd want to go really bold and bright, you know, really shocking pink. And I haven't quite got there yet. But I did let my inner rebel kind of ditch the ditch the natural dye colours a few years ago when I chose to embrace the silver. Um, the next step in my rebel journey is to just go with the colour, you know, the bright colours. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Watch this space. Maybe one day you'll tune into a video on here and I'll have a shock of bright pink hair. <laughs> oh, that would be funny, wouldn't it? Anyway. If you've got more nerve than me, go and do it. Go dye your hair bright pink. Number four, a camper van. Become a van lifer. Now this we haven't done yet, but this is on our um, to-do list, our bucket list. And we're hoping probably by the end of this year, maybe early into next year, we'll have found the van we want. Now, not not a caravan or a motorhome, which apologies to any caravanners or motorhomers out there. They're not what we want. They're just a little bit too conventional. What we want is a panel van that's been converted into a small, tiny living space. And, you know, this, I know there's a big sort of van life movement out there. It's growing, so it's probably not that big a rebellion. But it is for us. And what I think what it will give us an opportunity to do is to really minimize life. Now, I'm not ready to minimize on my house. I'm not ready to downsize. I'm not ready to you know, go minimalist and get rid of all my things. I just haven't, I'm not there. But having the van, just going away, exploring lots of different places that we've never been to before, the nooks and crannies of our country, of the UK, of Ireland, into Europe, who knows, even the world, but to just go and explore the nooks and crannies that we've not seen, to open the back doors of the the van in the morning and and have a view we've never seen before. I just think we'll be absolutely amazing. So I'm going to tap into my inner van life rebel and um, we will do that. That is one that's going to happen. And when we get it, I've got another YouTube channel for the life me. I cannot remember the name of it. It used to be that cruise dance couple. It's not anymore. I think it might be thorough good life. Can't remember. I should probably know that. Um, But what I want to do is start making more content for that channel. That's just more our adventures when we get the van. So yeah, that's my number four, tapping into my inner van life rebel. Number five, wear what makes you happy. And if that happens to be bright red shiny boots, then wear the bright red shiny boots. If you want to wear a mini skirt, 
go and wear a mini skirt. If you want to wear a black bin liner, go and do it. Do you know, when I think back to when I was younger, remember my mum in the 80s, midlife women seemed to be like clones of each other. They all had very similar hairstyles, probably a perm that was set in curlers. And it, they, they went from being young women to old women like overnight because their fashion just seemed to have to fit a mould. They all wore the same sorts of things. They all wore very sensible clothes. I'm sure they didn't all, but this was my world. And nowadays, I don't think we have to do that. I think, you know, in my 50s, I still want to wear the red shiny boots. I still want to wear clothes that express who I am in my way. I don't, I don't want to be constrained by a what, what's allowed and what isn't. There used to be a lot of rules that I used to hear, you know, women over 40 shouldn't have long hair. Women over 40 shouldn't wear, you know, skirts above the knee. What a load of BS. You know, let's wear whatever we want and have this opportunity now because I don't know about anybody else, but I certainly find that as I've got older, I care less about what people think. Let's just go and wear whatever we want to wear. If you want to wear the hat, wear the hat. If you, you know, whatever it is, find your style, find what works for you and let your inner rebel design your style. Forget forget fashion, forget convention, forget what you think you should be wearing. Let's just tap into what, what makes us feel good. Okay, number six, stop saying sorry for everything when it's not your fault. Now, of course, if you've done something hurtful and you owe somebody an apology, that's very different. But, you know, I don't know, we just do it all the time, don't we? Something's delivered in a restaurant, it's not quite right. We're like, oh, excuse, excuse, excuse me, sorry, sorry, sorry. Can I, can I just, um, this isn't, this isn't quite right. Look, I'm, I'm really sorry to be a, a pest. I don't, I don't mean to be a nuisance. I don't mean to cause a fuss, but, you know, it, it's not actually what I ordered. No, stop, stop apologizing when something isn't right and it's not your fault. I was given a really good bit of advice a few years ago um, and it was to stop saying sorry and start saying thank you. And that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, for example, I don't know, you're late for an appointment. Instead of rushing in all flustered, go, so, so, so sorry I'm late, sorry I'm late. Uh, but you actually go in and you go, thank you so much for waiting. I really appreciate your patience. Um, I'm fully with you here now. And what a more empowering way to be that is. It's, it shows confidence. It shows grace and assertiveness and again I'm not saying if you know if you've messed a load of people up and it's completely your fault then by all means apologize but let's stop apologizing for things that are not our fault I do think this is a female thing as much as anything I think our response is to, to everything is to, to say sorry you know if somebody bumps into you in the supermarket and you apologize to them even though they've bumped into you <laughs> let's Let's be a rebel and let's just stop saying sorry for things that aren't our doing. Number seven, start a YouTube channel. Honestly, start a YouTube channel. I think in the olden days, well, you know, 15 years ago, um, YouTube was seen as a young person's thing. But if we consider that you, when did YouTube start? Was it, it mid-2000 mid, mid and some things? Mid two, right, about 2005, I think. I don't know. In the middle of the, what, how do we say that? Like you could say the middle of the 20s or the middle of the 30s, but how do you say the middle of the, is it the noughties? I don't know. Anyway, about 2005, 2006, I think YouTube started. So even the people that started YouTube then are now probably in their 40s. So it's definitely an older person's thing. And there's a huge amount of creators starting who are older. If you look on internet and search for creators over 50, we are taking over the tube. Um, let's go do it. It's such a lot of fun. And you can tap into so many um, elements of getting older that are good for you, like keeping your brain active as you're learning new things recording and cataloging your life as a legacy for people um, to, to, you know, following you. Um, just being able to share your knowledge and wisdom that, let's face it, we've gained a lot. We've lived. We have lived. We've got a lot to share. And having 
a, a platform like YouTube is just brilliant. You know, it's so much fun. I've made so many friends. It's such a lovely community. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you be a rebel and start your own YouTube channel? Honestly, you'll love it. Go do it. Do it. Do it today. Go and start your channel. Anyway, number eight. Wouldn't this be great? I haven't done this, but if I could really get into the inner rebel, I'd do this. Take a gap year. Just take a gap year. Why should that be the, um, why should that only be open to, you know, teenagers and, and youngsters? Yeah, we, we, we should have a, a gap year. Now, I haven't done it. I don't know if I ever will, but wouldn't it be amazing if you could? And if you, maybe if you don't want to kind of fully quit your job, why not take a year sabbatical? And, you know, take a gap year, go and volunteer to build a school in Africa or whatever it is that takes your fancy. Wouldn't that be amazing? Maybe when we get the van, we'll just, you know, shut the house up for a year and we'll go off around the world and we'll have our gap year. That would be amazing. So I say, don't know if I'll ever do it, but it'd be fun, wouldn't it? And finally, number nine. Do a boudoir shoot. Go on, go and Find a photographer that does boudoir photography and go and you know, express yourself in a boudoir shoot. I've got a friend who is a boudoir photographer and she works with women uh, to, to really help them to feel better about themselves. And, and it, it's very empowering when I see some of her photos and the images that she creates, you can see the women are really having a lot of fun and feeling you know you can just see the confidence in them now I've never had a massively brilliant uh, relationship with my body image it's it's never been great even from a kid but I even I think women who've perhaps had you know no body issues in the past when they hit midlife and we go through this messy middle it messes up our body you know our skin starts to be a little bit less toned our muscles are a bit less toned for, for the majority of us you know, we may put on some weight, our shape changes, the boobs get a bit more saggy, whatever it might be, you know, we can start to feel even worse about our body image. And I think the idea of going and have a, having a boudoir shoot, just to, to feel a little bit more, I don't know, sexy again, maybe, I don't know, but I just, I think that would be a lot of fun. I haven't done it. It is on my bucket list as opposed to the wish list. I'm sure Mark would quite like it. Um, who knows? I might, I might just give her a call and, and see if she can do that for me. I think it would be really empowering, you know, to go and do that. Anyway, that was my um, off the cuff. Um, you see the rebel in me? Just off the cuff, let's just get this done. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments, have you ever had a boudoir shoot? If you did, was it fun? How did it leave you feeling? Did you feel really empowered by it? Or any other of the um, rebellions? What, what, have be, what have been your rebellions? What have you done that's a bit, you know, didn't expect somebody to do that in their 50s or their 60s? Let me know. I'd love to know in the comments. And if you've enjoyed it, do drop me a like. That would be absolutely amazing. And I will talk to you soon. Take care. <laughs>